Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how I photograph my artwork using my cell phone. And you can use these photos for, you know, your product listings, whether it's your website or Sotchyard or whatever you tend to use. Um, I'm going to show you how I photograph artwork using just my cell phone. And my cell phone is not even that great. It's an iPhone 6, so it's like four years behind what the current standard is. So it's not even that great of a camera, but I'm gonna show you how I edit those photos both on the phone or on my computer to really make them look clean and professional and how we do that. Now, I'm gonna talk about also how to photograph kind of just in general, um, but inside and outside. Now, I tend to photograph my artwork outside, but there's kind of a caveat to it. So we'll talk about the inside and then we'll talk about outside. And I actually have a picture, or I mean, sorry, a painting that I can use to photograph to kind of give you an idea of how I do this. So you'll see it from the angle of the camera because I'll talk about it that way. So first up, I'm gonna head over here and talk about photographing inside. Okay, so let's talk about lighting. These are a couple of studio lights that I got on Amazon. Um, I think they were like 40 bucks or something like that. I would recommend probably getting a couple more, but at least two. Um, but they do have like these little umbrella things. Here, let me get one out. They have these little umbrella things that you can put over them uh, that fan out that are kind of like, you know, in movie studios, how it, it, it disperses the light. Um, so these are just some studio lights. Um, the first thing I'll say is that you want to use white, like light. So not like warm yellow or anything like that you want it just pure white as, as white as you can get it because the white balance if you use like yellow bulbs it's going to throw off the tint of your colors for your artwork so you want to use a just a white bulb um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to use these to kind of disperse the light um, you put it over the bulb so it's not just like a, a fine light like say this was the painting we were photographing if you don't use it you're going to see that little spot of light but with the diffuser it kind of diffuses it out so it's more uh uniform okay so i got like i said i got these on amazon uh 40 bucks i just put like a uh, studio lights or something like that and you can find some decent deals out there but anyway you probably want at least two um, if not more and if you just use lighting inside your house same thing you want to like if you have like fluorescent or something or if you use regular bulbs you want everything just white not no yellow um, as white as possible so that it gives you clean uh, colors so that when you take those pictures it's it's the actual color that you see now I prefer natural light like sunlight and we're going to come back to that so next let's talk about how to photograph it so if this was my painting and I was going to photograph it, I would not want the light really close or right in front of it. Okay, so kind of how you can see the glare from the sun because of the angle, it's because of the where the light is. So if the light was behind me, it'd be casting forward, which is fine if it's diffused. But even if it's behind me, I'm going to create a shadow or the lights behind me, if they're not diffused, you'll see the spots of light and parts will be lighter and darker. Um, What's best is if you can either have it diffused in front of the painting, like quite a ways back so that there's no like little spots of light, or if you can put the light perpendicular to the piece. So if you have light, like say you, you want to film, you want to take a picture in your room um, and it's on a wall, but say that was the window where the sun was coming in, then it'd be perpendicular so that when you're standing here, there's no hard spots of light because the light is going past it. So it's perpendicular. And we're going to talk about that um, with the outside lighting in just a moment. But if you can do that, or if you can have the light above the surface pointing down, that will also kind of do the same thing. This is why in museums and galleries, why the light is up high and it's casting down because it doesn't create the shadows. It, it's a nice uniform look of color. So if you can make it perpendicular, if you can put your light over here casting this way, um, you know, for I would say for natural light, try to do that where it's not directly like this. Um, another reason is because even if you have diffusers on these lights and, and say it's behind, like where I'm standing right now facing this piece, if there's glass on it, you're going to see that glare. So having the light in front of the item is going to be a challenge because of that glare. So if you can put it off like to the side over here going this way, you're not going to see that in the, the glass if you're standing, you know, over here. Um, 
Another tip I can give you is if you're photographing glass work, if you can just take the glass out of the frame and just take a picture of the item in the frame, but without the glass, obviously that's going to cut down on the glare because there's no glass there. So if you can do that, do that. Um, you could also just Photoshop a frame over the image so that it looks like it's framed. Um, I could do another video of that as well. A really easy way to do that. If anybody has wants to see that, I'll do that in a separate video. Okay, so that's my tips for inside. Um, try to do the light from the side if possible. Um, or if, there, if it's not like a glossy painting or there's no glass, you could do it in front of it like where I'm standing. As long as you have diffusers so that there's no like major spots of light um, pointing it down. So that's uh, that's my suggestions for po photographing inside. And you want to get as far back as possible. However, you don't want to zoom in as much as possible. So like if usually if the further back you get, the less glare you're going to see. But then you have to zoom in and it kind of cuts down on the resolution. So unless you have a really good phone, that's not a problem. But if you have like an older phone like I'm using, it doesn't zoom out and zoom in very far. So I kind of have to stand as close as I possibly can so that I get the whole thing. But I usually just want like a, just a little bit of an outline around the painting. Um, so that's another suggestion I give you is when you take a picture, obviously it's too, too large for me to kind of get the whole thing in, but you want to leave a little bit of space around it because we're going to edit this photo anyway and we want the whole thing in it. So that's a... That's one last thing I could say for that. Um, the final tip that I would give you, like if you're if you're still having glare issues, or you just can't get around it, um, and we'll talk about that for the outside, um, is you can kind of take a picture from the side. So like since the glare is on the right because this my garage door is open, I could take the picture from the right, and I would take the picture of the painting, get the whole painting in there, and then I could stretch it later. Um, it's not ideal to do that, but if you have to kind of get it at an angle to get the whole thing in without glare, um, there is a way you can fix it in on the computer or on the phone, uh, which we'll talk about uh, when we get to the editing step of the photo. So that's that's it for inside. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to grab a small piece and bring it outside and then talk about photographing outside. So I've got my piece here, and it, ideally you want to put it on a level surface. So I have like a, my driveway. My driveway is obviously slanted. I could go put it on my sidewalk, which I have actually photographed work on my sidewalk because it's flat. Um, but for this, uh, you know, intents and purposes, we'll be okay. All right, so let's talk about why I like doing it outside. So I like filming, uh, I like taking the pictures of my work outside because of the natural light. It gives it a more realistic, vibrant, uh, like coloration. Some people say that you can, you know, record when it's cloudy. Sorry, it's going to be loud for a second. So I've heard people say, oh, just record while it's cloudy. The problem with that is that it, it puts kind of a gray scale over the image. Um, so I don't like to record on cloudy days, but it does get rid of glare. So it's, it's really your call. I don't like doing it because then it kind of gives it like a cooler tone and then I have to go and correct it. And I, I don't like doing that. So anyway, this will give you kind of the, uh, the best vibrancy of the piece. Now, the sun is right up there. I don't I don't know if I can hurt your eyes by recording this and I don't think so, but anyway. Um, one thing I'll say is that I like recording in the late afternoon or early evening, or sorry, early morning, when the sun is either, you know, just barely coming up or when it's setting over there. So, um, because when it's overhead, then you're gonna have the glare of the piece, whether it's got glass or it's just a glossy painting. You know, you don't want that, so, what I would say is just, you know, take your pictures either early morning before the sun is all the way up or late afternoon when the sun's about to go down. That way you don't have glare, but you have the natural light. So that's uh, that's usually when I do it, like very early morning or late afternoon. Okay, so now let's talk about actually taking the picture. I take my pictures flat, like straight down uh, as, as much as possible. So like right now I would uh, take this picture, even with the shadow and everything, and uh, I would try to line it up as much as possible in the frame, but with a little bit of a buffer. So you can see that I've got a buffer here, a little bit of a buffer here, here, and here. I don't try to line it up because I'm going to fix it later. And I want to make sure that the whole thing is in the photo. So first I snap a photo like this. And then what I do is I actually go around the piece and I will snap a photo, uh, usually on every side except for the side where the sun is because it's just gonna cast a shadow. So I would take usually like three photos like this 
or I'll take a photo of one and then I will rotate the piece. So then I will put it the other way and then come around and take a couple of photos straight down on each side. So that way I have, you know, at least a half dozen photos to work with. Now, let's say that the sun was still up and you know it's kind of up right now so it's up there um so let's say that it was casting a glare on this one thing we can do is use that rule that i told you about perpendicular and then set this somewhere where it's going to lean up against something so if i wanted to cut out the the sun i could always lean the artwork up against a wall where the uh the sun is and then just take the photo that way so i could always like prop this piece up against something and then take the picture like that. Obviously I wouldn't line myself up with it and then you could just turn the piece you know the other way if you need to and take the picture like that. You kind of have to you know you might have to move it around obviously it's too dark so you know if it's a it's an overhead then you can usually just prop it straight up and take the picture because the sun is down on it kind of like we were talking about with the museum lighting so that's what i do um so i will just go around i'll take like a few pictures and then kind of move it so that the light hits it a little differently take a few pictures and then i'll take a few like up close photos just to kind of have some if i need more than just the one photo that i need um and then that's it so i'll take the photos outside usually i'll put them on a flat surface take the pictures and then once I have a, f a picture so I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple pictures while we're recording that way I have something to show you guys afterwards so I'm gonna move this over we're gonna, I'm gonna take a couple pictures there's one and there's another one and there's another one now if there was glare no matter kind of how you put it there is one thing you can do where you can tilt it to kind of get the glare out now it's gonna stretch your image a little bit but we're gonna we can correct that with a, a free app on the phone so we'll talk about that so let me go ahead and take one just like that come on the other side i'll take one more like that let's do a tilted one okay so we should have some photos here and i think we're good so we've got enough work and uh we've got enough photos so we're going to put this bad boy down and then now what we'll do is we will edit these photos both on the phone and on the computer so you can kind of get an idea of how I do it either on the phone on the computer um, and you have a couple ways to do it so let's head over to my desk and we'll do it on the phone first okay so I'm going to show you how to edit your photos using a free app called Snapseed so basically you open Snapseed while well, you down from the app store obviously and then you um, then you open up the photos so we're going to edit one of these photos that we took at the end the ones where the you know the the product that we're taking a picture of the artwork um, isn't perfectly centered in the image so I can kind of show you how you can fix that um, so let's open one of those so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to kind of crop it down so oops, we're going to go to tools and the first thing we want to do is we want to crop it so we want to kind of get out all of the stuff that isn't the painting and so we're going to bring it down to the largest edges of the piece okay and we'll, we'll worry about the rest of it in a in a few minutes so first we're going to crop it so that we get rid of all that other stuff and just making sure it was still on okay so now we've got just the painting right and now what we can do is something called perspective and so we can take this and we're going to do free and we're going to pull it to the edges okay so now we can pull this painting to the edges of the cropped uh, border that we made and it's going to stretch out the painting to the edges and then we can kind of make sure that it, it reaches to all the edges and I think we got a little bit hanging over oh sorry and I think we're good so now we have an image that we can work with because now it's got just the painting in it we've cropped the edges we've uh expanded that over so we're good we've got it um pretty good now the only thing that you may need to do is one last thing which is tune image and we're going to do this on the computer as well but basically the only thing you really need to worry about is brightness and contrast so the image is pretty bright already because it was out in the sun i usually add just a tiny bit of brightness just to kind of get the colors to really pop um 
Obviously, I don't want to mess with it too much because I'm not trying to sell a fake image of a painting. I don't want it to be like way better than the actual painting they buy, right? I'm not trying to give them like do like this false advertising thing. Uh, people need to stop messaging me. Uh, hold on, I need to put that on. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with it too much because I don't want to try to sell something that isn't real, right? But we do want to add a little bit of contrast just to show the difference in the colors. So I'm going to add a little bit of contrast as well. Um, we're going to add it and then punch it up. And then if you swipe up or down, you can actually just kind of choose through their little pieces. Um, that's too much. So I'm actually going to pull down... Let's see what it looks like. So actually, I'm going to reduce that brightness. So it'll probably actually be back to the way it was. Um, and then that's it. So once you have it, you can click export and then you can save as any one of these. Uh, if you do the export, then it keeps the permanent changes um, or you can just save it as a copy so you can edit it later, whatever you want to do. But essentially, you would just export it and then that's it. Now you have your image and there it is. So now we have our picture of our painting. And that's it. That's all you have to do to edit it on the phone with Snapseed. So you just crop new perspective if it's not straight within the crop. And then tune it just a little bit just to get the colors to pop. And then that's it. And then that's, I mean, that's really all there is to editing on the phone. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll head over to my computer and record my screen on my computer so that you can see how I edit photos on my computer instead. And once you have this image, oh, sorry, I guess. All right, and then once you have that image, now you can just, you know, you export it as like a JPEG and then you can email it to yourself or send a message or whatever, or you can even just use it on your phone if whatever you're trying to upload it to is on your phone. So now you have an image that you can use and it's is, it is pretty simple. So let's head over to the computer now and I'll show you how to edit the photos on the computer. Okay, so now that we're at the computer, I can show you how to edit photos on the computer. Now, first off, I use a program called GIMP. Um, it's free. You can just look it up like online. Uh, I think it's like the website's like GIMP.org or something like that, but it'll have this little fox looking thing. So it's called GIMP. It's a photo editing tool for free. Um, and this is what we're going to use. So uh, I've got the photos here. Let me view large icons so I can see. Okay, so this is our edited photo. Actually, you can't see that, so let me pull that over here. This is our uh, large photo here. Um, this is the one that we edited on the phone. So you can actually see it's not too bad. However, you can see that there is a little bit of like glare from the sun. Um, and that's just the way that I took the photo and it had that on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through these real quick and kind of see which one is the best. That one, uh, that one got cut off. And we got that. That one's too much. And this is residue from the gloss. Okay, so the gloss actually had a little bit of residue on it. So this one so far kind of looks like the best. Um, that, was not, that was not bad. That's probably actually the best one. So I think I'm gonna use that one. Okay, so we've got this one. So that's the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna, we can drag and drop into GIMP and it will actually just open it up so we don't really have to do anything. Okay, so we, once we've got our photo, same thing. We're gonna go up to here on our little square, a um, little square tool here. And the very top left is a the rectangular select tool. So that's what we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically outline our painting or our artwork and we're going to put this within the rectangle and it's okay if it cuts a little bit off. When we crop it we actually you don't really need the edges a whole lot. They're kind of messy anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in so that the whole painting is within the boundaries and you, we could stretch it if we want which I'll show you how to do um, or we could just you know crop it within the edges. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is then we're gonna crop the selection so that all that's left is what we chose. So then we're gonna unselect, so select none. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of the edge still kind of here of, you know, what was around the painting. So we can do one of two things. We can use the rectangle and crop it in a little bit more and just, you know, or just go from this side and then kind of stop right there so that that piece is in. But then we're gonna miss part of the painting. So then what we can do is we can 
take uh, the perspective tool here, which is this little cube, and we could just kind of pull that past the edge so that all of the painting, so the little yellow lines is basically what you've cropped to. So you could just kind of take the piece and do perspective to that so that it transforms, so that it fills that whole square. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select it one more time so that it's got, you know, what, what what's within that little boundary selected and then crop to selection again, and then we're done. So now we can select none and the image is now highlighted within that barrier. Okay, now, now that we've got it cropped and within the barrier, this image actually doesn't look too bad. Um, then we would do brightness and contrast. Again, we are not trying to go crazy with it. We really just want enough uh, contrast and enough brightness that people can see the colors that we've used. So on here, it's a little different than the other one, like the way that it looks is a little different. So I'm actually gonna bring down the con or the brightness a little bit, but punch up the contrast just a tad, just, just enough that it shows that we've got some different colors in there and I'll probably bring that up a little bit and then probably leave it at that um, because that actually looks really good that shows off that red that's in there um, it shows some of the grays and some of the oranges and you can see all that so honestly I'd be okay with this isn't a gray photo so I'd probably reshoot that again until I was happy with it because of like the glare and the angle and stuff like that. But if I had to, I would use this image just to get it out there because something is better than nothing. So uh, once you have it, then you'll just do file, you'll do export as, and then you would exit, you can export it as whatever, you know, let's just do red orange painting. And I use JPEGs because they use less uh, files, like the files are smaller as JPEG. And a lot of websites prefer smaller um, files. So that's why I use JPEG. Um, and then we just export. And then you'll choose the quality. You can do like 90, 91. The more you, the more, the more you raise it, obviously the bigger the file size. So I, I keep it around 90 and then export. And then that's it. So that is, that's everything. So that is taking that photo with your camera phone. Cause I've seen play, like a lot of um, websites will be like, oh yeah, use your, the best DLC, DSLR camera you can find. It's like, oh, those are expensive. So not everybody has access to that. A lot of people though have at least a phone, even if it's not the newest phone, they have some kind of phone. So you take that picture, you can take it you know, inside with white light or take it with natural light. Natural light is best. Um, as long as it's not pointing directly on the surface, it's perpendicular to it. Then once you have, you know, I, I would say take a bunch of photos. Say, take at least like half a dozen, maybe 12 um, different ways until it looks good. And then once you have those photos, you can bring them in to Snapseed on the phone or you can bring them into GIMP and you can crop out the rest of the stuff. Use perspective to stretch it if you need to so that it's straight. And then you just tweak the contrast and the brightness a little bit so that it just it gives it a little variation in the colors just so that people can see those different colors. But, you know, don't go crazy with it. Um, and then that's it. You just export it as a JPEG. And there you go. Now you've got an image you can use on your website. You can use it on such art. You can use it on, you know, whatever you need to, even Instagram if you had to. So it, it, this is that, that's how that's what I do. It doesn't take too long. Uh, not too complicated all using free software and uh, that's it so hopefully you guys like this video if you did please let me know in the comment section leave a like whatever you got to do um, I really appreciate every you know every bit it all helps and uh, yeah that's about it so I'll see you guys in the next video take care guys